In today's video, I'm going to go over how I retuned my audio system and what new equipment I used to accomplish this. Previously, I had tuned my audio system using Audio Control's SA4100i RTA microphone. This is a wonderful product, but sadly is no longer available. Since it's no longer available, I wanted to show a cost-effective way to tune your car. That way is the Dayton Audio IMM-6 calibrated microphone. This microphone can be used with devices that have a 3.5mm audio jack. Dayton also makes a USB-C version, the IMM6C, that can be used with an Android or newer iOS device. This product is the least expensive way I could find to reliably RTA a car. The microphone is compact, inexpensive, and easy to use. It can work with multiple programs. I chose to use it with the existing app I already had, Audio Controls Mobile Tools. This program was developed by Studio 6 Digital, and they have a similar app as well called Sound Tools. I will have a link in the video description to all the products discussed in this video. Before you can use the microphone, you'll need to upload the calibration file into the app or program that you're using. Here are the steps to take when using either app developed by Studio 6 Digital on iOS devices. Go to Dayton Audio Calibration File Download Tool. Locate the IMM-6 serial number on the back of the microphone's case. Enter the serial number and click Search. Download the calibration file. Save the file to your phone. Open the Sound app, go to Microphone Setup menu, connect the microphone to your device. It should say Headset Mic 1. If it says Internal Mic 1, check your connection. Click the I button on the right side of the screen. Click the Calibration File button in blue. Click Import on the bottom of the screen. Locate the downloaded file and click on it. You should now see it in the list of calibration files. Click on that file and select Import at the bottom of the screen. Once imported, the microphone is ready to use. Now that the microphone is ready to use, we need to position it close to where your head is in the car. I chose to attach the microphone to a selfie stick and set the stick in the top left hole of the driver's seat. Ideally, you want the microphone in the center of the driver's side headrest. I attached a 3.5mm audio extension cable to the microphone. This allowed me the ability to easily view the RTA screen on my phone anywhere in the car or outside. I connected my iPhone to the car's audio system and played pink noise. I connected the microphone to an older iPhone. I chose to sit in the back seat and began retuning the system. I went through this process twice, so the second time I ended up running the cables under the driver's side passenger door and to a laptop and iPhone on a table. This setup was better because inside the car was warm due to the fact I didn't want to run the AC and have that introduce unwanted noise into the microphone. Anytime you're tuning a vehicle, you'll need a target curve. This is typically referred to as a house curve. This is the curve you want your speaker sound to follow. 
Since I was going for a sound quality tune, I chose to use Audio Frog's house curve. The curve has a bump in the lower frequencies from 150 hertz and below. 200 hertz to 2.5 kilohertz is flat. 3 kilohertz begins a slight dip, with a second dip at 10 kilohertz to 20 kilohertz. This curve is a great starting point. Once you've tuned the car to this curve, you can make small tweaks to fine tune the car to your liking. I made small tweaks to 5 and 600 hertz by lowering them a bit. Here are a few tips when tuning your vehicle. The first is, if possible, tune each channel separately. Tuning each speaker location separately will yield the best results. On the front channels, you will want to make each side decibel level the same. This will help with center imaging. I found I had to decrease the driver's side level slightly so that it would match the passenger side. The second is, try not to boost a frequency more than 3 decibels. The more boost, the more you can introduce distortion. The third is to make sure all the speakers are in phase. This is easy to do using your EQ. If you're listening to a channel and have the left channel muted, when you unmute the left channel, the EQ frequencies should go up. If they go down, your speakers are out of phase. Finally, the fourth is if your mid-range does not sound good, check the 5 to 600 hertz range. If the highs seem a bit too bright, you may need to make adjustments to the 1.5 to 2.5 kilohertz range. Now that we've got our curve and gone over some tuning tips, it's time to tune the system. I began by muting all my channels except for my driver's side channel. I adjusted each frequency one by one. I looked at the RTA and made adjustments to the EQ. I watched the RTA as I made adjustments to the EQ. I kept adjusting until the frequency was at the level that matched the house curve. You'll notice when you adjust a frequency, the frequencies to the left and right of that frequency may change as well. This means you may need to readjust the frequency you were just working on when you move to the next frequency. Once you're satisfied with how the curve looks, you will mute that channel, unmute the other, and begin the process again. If you're just adjusting the tweeters, this process shouldn't take long. In the video, I readjusted my entire system because I've been playing with different curves. When the front two channels are done, unmute all the channels and listen to some music that you're familiar with. If you feel you need to make small changes to the EQ, you can do that without going back into the RTA if you want. Just make sure that you make the same changes to the other channel. For example, if you feel the tweeters are built bright, you can decrease the 1.5 kHz frequency 1 dB on both sides on the left and right channel. Since you're listening to music and not pink noise, you should be able to tell immediately if the change of the sound is better. I'm very picky on how my system should sound, so if you're like me, you may need to listen to the system for a day or two and decide if further tweaks need to be made to the system. I find the Audio Control DSP makes this easy. When I first began tuning my system, I found the factory Bose system had the mid-range boosted quite a bit, which is why you see that I had turned some of those mid-frequencies way down. 
I would say that my DSP is the single best piece of equipment that I have in the car. It has allowed me to fine tune my system to a particular taste. Without it, I would not have been able to achieve the sound that I have today. As much as I love Focal speakers, their higher end speakers can be a bit harsh without the proper tuning. When I listen to the Focal Evo speakers without any processing and use the factory tune, they didn't sound good at all. I'm happy with how the, the sound of the system has turned out now. I have a very clean and clear front stage. Please let me know your experience with your car's sound system. What have you added? What do you like? What do you dislike? I read all the comments and do my best to help with any questions. Thank you for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe for more content.